is the uh, first edition of this workshop uh, jointly held with the Yuma conference about explainable user models and um, personalized system. I'm happy to see around 20 persons, which is not uh, trivial for a Saturday afternoon in July, so I'm very happy for, for that. Um, here in the in the right lower corner of the of the page, you can see our Twitter account uh, as well as the, um, the, the the hashtag you can use if you want to tweet or post something about the, the workshop throughout the uh, throughout the, the event. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the the people who has helped me to to, to, to organize. Uh, this workshop. Uh, many thanks really to, to Nava, Oana, Marco, Giovanni and uh, Professor Jürgen Ziegler for the, uh, for the support for the organization. I think that we have arranged a very nice program. Um, just a quick overview of the motivations uh, of the workshop. Uh, we more and more rely on intelligent applications. They are going to play a fundamental role in uh, our daily lives. But the main problem that we have to face is that these uh, systems, adaptive systems, user modeling systems, uh, intelligent assistance, recommender system, and so on, typically are black boxes. So we are not aware of the internal mechanisms of these systems. We are not aware of uh, how the personalization process works. Uh, and this is not good, uh, especially because uh, some recent regulations, such as the European GDPR, has emphasized the need for transparent and explainable models. So we have to open uh, AI black boxes. So the main uh, research question behind the, 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 the whole workshop is to investigate how we can improve the uh, transparency and the explainability of user modeling, adaptation, and personalization uh, processes. Uh, we had uh, six papers. Uh, we had nine submissions, and we accepted six papers, from uh, two from Italy, two from Germany, and uh, uh, three from Germany and the one from Poland. Here you have an overview of the articles that we have accepted. As you can see in the right part of the slider, we have a very uh, heterogeneous set of uh, topics which, is, which will be discussed throughout the, the workshop. We have a, a Rexis paper, user modeling paper, uh, argumentation based uh, um, explanation strategies. We have article based on uh, deep learning techniques, which are very trending in the community. Uh, articles based on user studies, and also articles such as uh, the last one we present, with that focuses on very new domains. So again, it's a very heterogeneous set of topics that, uh, in our opinion, can cover most of the directions that are currently. Um, investigated in the research in the area of uh, explainable systems. Here you have an overview of the of the tags of the, the, the keywords that are used in the articles we have accepted, and you can see that most of the topics that we want to investigate they are um, all there, and this is again good. Uh, we will also have a very nice invited talk by Katarzyna Bodzinska. Um, about uh, computational ethos, and she will uh, explain later uh, the, the main topic of the invited talk. But I can anticipate you that is very interesting and very nice. So thanks again to to Kasha for this uh, for giving this invited talk. Uh, and here you have an overview of the program. Um, we will start in the first session that will be chaired by Nava. With the, with the invited talk. Then we'll have a very short break, around 10 minutes. And uh, the, the first presentation that we have put in this session, because it is very close to the, to the arguments of the first uh, presentation. Then, after the, the second break, we will have all the other papers in the second part of the, of the workshop. Uh, they are split by a short break as well. 
we have 15 minutes for the for the full papers with uh, five minutes of questions and uh, 10 minutes or for the uh, for the for the short papers uh, some of the presentation will be uh, delivered by using the pre-recorded videos as we have done for the main conference while other presentation will be um, will be presented uh, live by the presenters that are online. Uh, that's it. So thanks again to uh, all the organizers and to all of you who have joined the event. And I hope you will enjoy all the all the workshop. So um, that's it. Uh, now I just pass the word to to Nava that will uh, share the first session of the of the workshop thank you cataldo for the very nice opening and also for your work and the work of all the co-organizers in making this event possible also online in this strange uh, setup uh, it is my honor and my pleasure to invite and introduce our speaker. Uh, Kasia Brzezinska is someone who is quite known, I would say, in the argumentation community um, and is maybe one of these rare birds that combines fields that are very natural to combine and interesting in the way that they are. So. If we look at her bio, right, it's argumentation and persuasion linked through philosophy, rhetoric, and natural language processing. And she does this in her role in Warsaw University, where she heads the laboratory of the new ethos. And we'll explain a little bit what this ethos uh, actually is. Uh, this is a group that develops models and techniques to process the use of eth ethos, the character of the speaker. So right in the user modeling, we care about different properties of speakers uh, or properties of users, and here it's the, the properties of the speaker, and how these relate to natural language in order to predict things like the results of presidential elections, trolls, and cyber bullies in social media, so very socially current topics. She has published two books, over 80 peer-reviewed uh, papers and journals, uh, so Synthesis, ACM Transactions on Internet Technology and Artificial Intelligence, this research also naturally has attracted research funding up to uh, a million euros in Polish, Swiss, British, German, and European programs. Perhaps more notably for the purpose of this uh, workshop is the ITN on Interactive Natural Language Technology for Explainable, Ar Explainable Artificial Intelligence. So this is a training network for uh, early career researchers working on explainable AI, and this is uh, one of the ways we know each other, I also know Kasia through our uh, research in, uh, in Scotland uh, for a brief time. So the talk is about ethos, the character of the speaker, uh, but I am really curious to hear what Kasia has to say about it. So I hand over the baton uh, to you now. Thank you, Nava, for a wonderful <laughs> introduction. I'm very pleased to be here, I mean, there, or in a few places, in fact. <laughs> yes, and uh, I wanted to thank organizers for inviting me and uh, have this opportunity to share and present my uh, research. Um, so let me share the screen with you um, first. And, um, is this working? Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, yes, it's that looks, looks good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So um, the topic is uh, of this talk is computational ethos. Uh, let me start with saying, uh, <laughs> explaining uh, what ethos is, who we are, and what does it have to do with computational ET. <laughs> so. Uh, Politicians put a lot of effort not only into planning what they are going to say, which is uh, logos or argumentation, but also into planning how they are going to look, uh, to design uh, their character, which is precisely ethos. So um, the research I will present today is a joint work of the laboratory of the new ethos and our colleagues uh, from uh, Dundee in the UK 
constants in Germany and uh, Santiago de Compostela in Spain. In the context of project that uh, Nava mentioned uh, that we are about to start in September, uh, interactor, uh, interactive natural language technologies um, for explainable AI, uh, AI. Uh, and specifically the laboratory of the new ethos is going to look at a customized interactive argumentation scheme for XAI. Uh, we are going to create um, a user profile uh, in order to adapt argumentation to match this profile. So the idea is that of course better profile uh, gives you better customization but then this better customization allows you to select better arguments for explain uh, uh, the decision of a system to a particular user. Uh, how we are going to <clears throat> use ethos in this project? So we are, um, uh, uh, we exploit uh, to a large extent the original theory of Aristotle together with a long tradition of studying ethos in humanities. We use um, ethos technologies that we previously developed, uh, ethos mining and ethos analytics, uh, which I will present today, that, that would be the focus of the topic. Um, and in the context of uh, uh, XAI, um, you can think about ethos as a way which human use to create user profile, which we will try to emulate uh, in, in the automated systems in our project I mean project within and now for XAI so back to uh, to what ethos is I, I wanted to give you a little bit more intuitions uh, probably the most uh, well known and most striking evidence of ethos power is Milgram's experiment uh, in which majority of participants were willing to administer final massive 450 uh, volt electric shocks to others dis uh, despite these people who, who, uh, who experienced electric shocks were sweating, trembling, biting their lips, groaning or digging their finger, fingernails into their skin just by following the white coat, just following a person who pretended to be a scientist and who used this authority of a, of a science to encourage people to uh, administer the, the, these electric shocks. Of course, it's not so dramatic. It was all played by actors, I mean, the, the, except of participants that were uh, uh, administering, uh, thought, uh, were thinking that they administer uh, the f final massive electric shocks. But that was, that was, uh, Quite, uh, quite a surpri big surprise for scientists themselves to find out how many people uh, were uh, obedient to authority. But uh, of course, uh, following authority, ethos of others, is not doesn't have to be a bad thing. On the contrary, it it can be a very positive, creative, even transformative force uh, in our life. We put trust in our teachers to acquire new knowledge, uh, in doctors to uh, help us to heal us, in uh, religious authorities to guide us in difficult matters of how to live our lives. Uh, we follow charismatic leaders um, and make a difference in the world. In fact, politics is one of the best examples of power of ethos um, that we exp experience, uh, all of us experience and uh, know well, very well. Um, there are many ethotic strategies that politicians uh, use. Being able to successfully establish your own ethos uh, for example, as a prosperous businessman, destroy ethos of your rivals or support your allies can significantly influence citizens, what citizen, citizens say, thinks about your policies and help you, win, uh, help you to win elections, what impacts our lives way beyond communications itself. Okay, so what specifically is our focus uh, in the laboratory of the new ethos. We start with theories and as I mentioned, we uh, heavily rely on Aristotelian rhetoric, which was first to introduce ethos, uh, character of the speaker together with logos, uh, argumentation, which is argumentation and pathos, emotions of speakers, as three means uh, of persuasion, three means of influencing others through communication. Uh, although 
we don't look at the content of, of ethos. Uh, for example, how to present ethos, which car characteristics of a person are persu persuasive and which one doesn't are, are not very uh, effective. Uh, there's a lot of really good work uh, in this area. Uh, instead, what, uh, what we are the focus on is uh, the form of ethos. And what I mean here is patterns of how patterns of uh, uh, language use patterns of how people express and refer to ethos in natural language. So that's our focus. Uh, so, sorry, uh, I should mention that in the uh, existing literature, there's not a lot on the on the forms of ethos. So we need to cherry pick some uh, some uh, um, fragments from rhetoric, philosophy, and psychology uh, to uh, to add to uh, um, what we know from Aristotle. Okay, so then, then we analyze, uh, technically, uh, we call it, uh, annotate a large amount of real debates in natural language, debates in parliament, debates uh, on cultural heritage and so on, uh, in order to, on the one hand, uh, validate th theories that we, uh, that we are um, founding our research upon, and on the other hand, uh, feedback or inform theory on the, uh, on the uh, uh, ethotic strategies that people actually use in real uh, in real life. Um, so we analyze a large amount of data, uh, unpack the structure through the uh, uh, some uh, software annotation tools. Uh, then we analyze. Then we store this analysis in databases, as so-called corpora, which can then be computational processes. Uh, we use these theories and uh, language resources uh, to um, implement uh, um, ethos technologies such as uh, ethos mining and ethos analytics, which I will present in a moment, uh, with uh, the perspective of specific applications always uh, and domains such as deliberative democracy or parliamentary debates or cultural heritage. So just to finish uh, of and summarize the introduction, what, what do we do in the laboratory of the new, new ethos? Uh, we develop resources, theories, and technologies, uh, which are empirical, first of all. So we look into real data, data the debates and arguments uh, that are scalable. Uh, so we look at um, large scale uh, data sets. Uh, then which are formal, uh, so we look into ethos structures of forms of ethos rather than uh, ethos contents. And impactful, uh, we look at ethos technologies that can be useful in specific domains. Okay, so now, uh, now uh, um, moving into a specific uh, research on ethos uh, that, we, uh, that, we, that we've done for parliamentary debates. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, we, we, the, our starting point is Aristotelian uh, concept of ethos. Uh, he understood it as, as a character of the speaker that needs to be established at the beginning of, uh, of the speech. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, the speakers can rely on the memory of audience or uh, on, on previous, uh, uh, previous um, uh, prof, uh, the previous profile, they need to uh, they need to establish at the beginning that they are authorized to take part in the debate. Of course, that that was uh, uh, um, defined or specified for the specific context of, of the um, Greek politic uh, in uh, ancient times. So naturally, we kind of extend this approach uh, and and allow uh, uh, other. Um, language use of, of uh, ethos uh, references. So um, just to give you the idea what the, the overall goal of, of uh, we had in this research, uh, here you have two examples, uh, real examples from uh, UK uh, Parliament that we claim they are atotic. So maybe uh, uh, I will read them uh, if I can. <laughs> Sorry, the part of the, um, the screen is covered by um, 
video. So uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Patton said the honorable member of uh, for Fork East is in his admirable speech put the position much more clearly than I could. The second example is Mr. Uh, Giles Redis said in doing so he failed to face up to his responsibility both to the house and to the schools of England, Scotland and Wales. So the idea that the very basic idea is that we can use the linguistic surface to rec recognize both uh, in terms of human analysis or automatic analysis that we can use to, uh, to uh, recognize or detect uh, ethotic uh, supports and ethotic attacks. So um, as I mentioned before, both of, both of these examples are uh, ethotic. I will give you a second to think which where on the linguistic surface that there are the uh, signals uh, of, of, of uh, um, supports of ethos or attacks of ethos. Um, so I don't know whether you were uh, able to, to spot it. It's not very difficult. So in the first example, uh, um, you can, you can uh, take admirable speech, this fragment as a as a signal, si signaling that uh, Mr. Patton is supporting Mr. Ewing. And in the second example, you can uh, take uh, failed to fail as signal, uh, signaling that Mr. Rat is, is attacking Mr. Posey. Technically speaking, we, uh, we, we call or annotate uh, um, the first uh, sentence as a positive easy, which is positive uh, ethotic uh, sentiment um, expression, and the second uh, type of uh, uh, utterance as negative ethotic sentiment um, expression, which is kind of like uh, ethos supports and ethos attack. Uh, so this this will th this. Uh, um, uh, this technique is, uh, um, will help us to identify uh, alliances and enmities between uh, politicians, right? So, so general comment, um, why, why to use these techniques? I mean, okay, we can, we can use these techniques, but why, why to care to use these techniques for, for uh, ethos? So on the one hand, you can ask politician of a user, for, for that matter, for opinion about others, for example, during the interview or the questionnaire on, online. Uh, but you can expect that politician might not give the honest answer, right? Uh, that he likes or no, doesn't like uh, as his colleague from parliament because of I know, political correctness or some strategic uh, um, maneuvering or so on. On the other hand, you can try to automatically detect uh, politicians' opinions in the wild, right? So you can, you can kind of like use ethos mining techniques to kind of scan basically what people are saying and pick up this ethotic supports, who is supporting, who is attacking whom, right? So you can, in other words, you can catch them red-handed. Um, so uh, why, why to do that? You can then build a network of alliances and enmities. So you can basically have a look who is liking whom in the parliament or who doesn't like whom in the parliament. Okay, so how, how do we do it? More technically speaking, um, we um, first, first of all, you need to do annotations. So here you, ha you, you have an example of of the analysis uh, of one uh, one utterance on the right hand side in the right hand side note you have uh, uh, what has been actually said in the parliament you also have the indication who said that uh, in this uh, example it's just a um, uh, just the initial of, of of a politician on the left hand side you have um, um, the content of what has been said you can think about this as semantic maybe, uh, of, of uh, an utterance. And we also keep track in what way it has been, uh, it has been introduced, this semantics or this context has been introduced by a politician. Here, interestingly, and this, which is quite 
actually common in, in, in Parliament, it, it has been done not through the assertion, but so-called assertive questioning. So the, it's, the politician is pretending that they ask questions, but also they kind of like uh, 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 smuggle some kind of assertive, uh, assertive um, op uh, opinion. Um, and then if we have uh, this um, content unpacked, then we can say whether it is that it, in this case, supports uh, Mr. Prior ethos, right? So this is the, the decision, of course, the, of the analyst, that, uh, that the interpretation of the analyst, that this specific, uh, uh, this specific fragment in the, in the parliament debate uh, um, was uh, aiming at targeting at, uh, at uh, supporting Mr. Pryor. Uh, this is a, a very analogous situation for attack. The only difference is that we annotate here not the default inference or the support, uh, but uh, an attack, which in our terminology uh, is called default conflict. Uh, here you can see the data set that we created. Um, um, in the, uh, we used a UK parliamentary record, which is really nice about uh, UK Parliament uh, uh, is that they it is transcribed daily uh, and stored in Hansard repository. So uh, that is uh, publicly available. So you can you have an access on daily base, basis on on the on. on all of the uh, parliamentary debates. So we, we used uh, um, the period of uh, Thatcher government because we, we thought that it might be, that it would be because it was such a controversial time in the history of, of the UK. So we were uh, um, expecting that there would be a lot of supports and attacks between politicians. Um, here you can see that uh, uh, software tools that we were using, the tools that, are, uh, that uh, were developed in the Center for Argument Technology in Dundee. Um, we annotated 60 sessions, 60 parliamentary debates uh, with um, uh, over seven, uh, 700 uh, um, uh, utterances uh, uh, and um, 253 speakers. The uh, uh, corpora, the annotation is available uh, publicly online. Uh, this is the uh, corpus that we collected. Uh, we had four different labels that we, that uh, annotators identified. S speaker, who is who is the, uh, the the source or the author of the utterance. Uh, target, whose ethos is targeted. Uh, and anecdotic supports and anecdotic attacks. Uh, interestingly, if you look at the frequencies here, that was the first corpus that attacks were more frequent at, and then more significantly more frequent than uh, supports. But funnily enough, uh, that was the first uh, corpus for ethos. Previously, we were looking only at the argumentation and in argumentation, supports are significantly more frequent than, than attacks. So may maybe just the parliament, <laughs> uh, parliamentary debates, I don't know, uh, politicians, but <laughs> more, uh, uh, more pro probable, uh, 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 more probable is that, uh, in fact, if we move from logos to ethos, people tend to kind of like be more aggressive or confrontational. Um, than cooperation. Uh, then on top of this uh, uh, language sources, we developed um, uh, ethos technologies. Um, we uh, created two pipelines for ethos mining. One was uh, um, using rule-based natural language processing with sentiment analysis. You can see here uh, that we have, uh, in this pipeline, we have three uh, layers. One, uh, the first one aimed to identify uh, uh, whether something is an anecdotic statement or is not an anecdotic statement, is neutral, talking about facts or some, some other stuff than it does. Uh, once we identify anecdotic statements, then the next layer we're about to identify, detect polarity of, uh, so whether it is a support or attack. And then if we had supports and attacks, then we created uh, the, the last um, layer where um, uh, creating a graph, basically that 
that visually represented this uh, network of uh, uh, politicians and uh, how they support and attack each other. I will not go into the technical details. Uh, if you if you are interested, uh, you can look at our paper uh, from 2016 from uh, from the uh, conference computational models of uh, um, computational models of, um, of argument. And comma. Um, it's you can find it on, on my web page. Maybe I should also mention that uh, currently uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, upgrading our web pages. Uh, it's work in progress. So uh, if you will not be able to find some information, uh, be patient, please, with us. And and in the in two months, it should be everything there. So you can come back to that later. Those are results. Um, Again, very briefly, um, you can see that uh, those, uh, th this pipeline didn't do badly. So um, if you look at the last column, it's F-score, which is basically kind of like accuracy of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, pipeline, of the automatic system. Uh, the first, uh, first um, uh, group here uh, presents baseline which is basically kind of like a, a, a random guess, right? So if you if you were to toss a coin and you have an utterance, you toss a coin and, and look at the, what coin says and say, okay, it is a topic. And then you repeat it for all of the, uh, all of the uh, uh, expressions and basically you have probabilistic random uh, uh, allocation. So the accuracy for such a, a random uh, allocation is uh, 0.45. If you then uh, the second group is the uh, techniques that uh, um, are out of the shelf. So in other words, if you want to just use something that already exists for this task, you can see that it actually performs even worse than baseline, but even worse than random choice. And the third group is that the two different uh, techniques that we that we looked at. So basically, this pipeline, but with a tweaked uh, techniques that we plug in uh, into this pipeline, and you can see that we achieve we are out there from quite significantly baseline. And in NLP world, 0.7 is critical. It's quite. <laughs> so we were quite happy. Uh, for polarity, for recognizing polarity, again, we kind of, um, uh, our the, 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 techni the uh, techniques that we developed outperformed uh, baseline as well. The second uh, pipeline that uh, we did, uh, that we developed two, uh, two years later, used um, deep learning techniques. Uh, and again, I will not go into the deta details. Technical details, uh, you can, if you are interested, uh, there's a paper on this in, published in, at Ichikai uh, conference. Um, results, we bo boost up uh, um, results a, a little bit farther. So, so um, our, in, in the previous work, um, the recognition was uh, of um, polarity was 0.78 and uh, this deep learning techniques, uh, applying uh, deep learning allowed us to, to, to achieve uh, 0.8 power. And uh, for non easy non-easy recognition, again, we, we improved the performance. So then the, the last step was, was to visualize uh, the data in, in the, uh, in the graph form. Uh, so here you can see um, uh, this an example of this visualization. Uh, the nodes are politicians. The colors uh, denote um, um, parties that uh, that they represented. So um, blue are conservative, uh, red are uh, labor. The closer nodes are, the, the more interaction is with, with them. Uh, between them, uh, uh, arrows represent uh, supports and attacks. So naturally, the uh, green ones are supports, the red ones are attacks. Um, of course, it's we, we, we were laughing that this is pretty much uh, spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> so it's not very clear uh, how to interpret it. But you can you can uh, click. Sorry, <laughs> you can click on the. Um, on each of the arrow or node, and then you can uh, get an insight of 
how what, what was the source, what, what was the target of the utterance, and how uh, what through what expression uh, this target uh, was supported or attacked uh, by a given source. Um, what is interesting, maybe uh, worth uh, saying here, is that uh, because Hansard is updated daily, you can make it dynamically, right? So you can you can basically run these algorithms every day and see how this uh, how how this graph changes over time. And maybe you know some politicians are closer to each other or start supporting each other rather than attacking, um, and and kind of like. Uh, and get an insight what um, what is going on in in the parliament uh, that, that some uh, fractions are creating coalitions um uh, and uh, at the moment we are uh, we we uh, are thinking about developing this uh, uh more uh, and especially uh, for example if you can, could see in real time how how it, it is changes changing for Boris Johnson how much he is starting to be attacked or uh, or supported over time that would be quite i think quite interesting as you see okay so moving on uh, if we have such a network what we can then do with that so we can we can predict we can make predictions about individuals and groups and we did a little bit of studying into this direction so of course what what we will need uh, for predictions we need uh, large uh, data set and but this is not a problem if you have ethos mining technology so we can generate uh, basically throw in uh, the arbitrary number of uh, parliamentary deba debates and create such graphs or in different in, in for different governments and once you have that uh, we showed that you can make predictions uh, uh, you can have an insight of the, uh, into individual uh, individual uh, politicians or uh, groups of politicians and like parties uh, here is uh, our analysis for Thatcher we looked at the, the whole career uh, we used um, we extracted uh, information about how she was uh, supported and attacks uh, during the, the, her politica, political career uh, the spikes here correspond to the high frequencies of attacks or supports that uh, supports are green attacks are uh, orange and then we looked in the literature uh, in the uh, political science literature and and uh, news articles uh, from that time to see whether the spikes correspond to something important in her career so we can see here that for example this spike correspond to that to uh, to uh, to, uh, to the uh, moment that she was appointed to a minister while this huge spike of uh, attacks correspond to her being appointed conservative uh, party leader and I think it's quite intuitive that if you are appointed to a position that is maybe not so important uh, you, you politicians will tend to kind of like like you uh, well uh, if you if you uh, um, uh, if you are appointed to a significant role especially in the difficult times political times you will it, 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 it's natural that you uh, it will attract a lot of attacks here we did uh, um, uh, analysis for uh, parties and that used uh, some uh, um, statistical uh, uh, analysis um, where we took um, some period of time uh, and look at labor and conservative specifically at three months before elections and one month before election and we looked at the amount of supports and attacks you uh, how they change over this time of this period three months versus one month so on this picture you you can see that a conservative party had uh, initially three months before election more um, uh, supports and then they dropped while labor increased their support and then we looked whether the, the slope whether it was like decreasing or increasing corresponds to who won uh, elections and uh, 
that the results were pretty, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, promising or uh, uh, nice. Uh, in all cases but one, uh, the slope the, uh, and the prediction uh, actually uh, corresponded to uh, who actually won or lost, uh, with the exception of, uh, of one case, but that was the case where the, there was almost um, the same amount of voting for Labour and Conservatives. So that, I mean, you can expect that statistics will kind of like, in such an equal situation, statistics will not give you the good predictions in a way, so. Okay, so uh, maybe um, um, there's one more interesting application of our previous work on ETHOS uh, to, uh, to XAI, explain, uh, explainable AI. You can differentiate types of ethos uh, in order to build a more fine-grained models of characteristics of politicians or users in the context of XAI. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> user modeling. Um, so, um, and, and as a result, to have a, a better, more precise, a better network or better predictions. Um, so we did a little a little pilot here uh, in in the context I mean uh, with respect to this uh, research goal. Um, so if you remember our style of annotation, where on the uh, right hand side we have we have uh, we record what, what has been actually said in the parliament. On the left hand side we have what has been meant, uh, but by what has been said. Um, which is uh, interpreted by analysts. And then we have, uh, uh, we annotate whether it is a support of someone's ethos or attack of someone's ethos. You can find fine grain the support and attack depending on, on what grounds the support and attack was, uh, was introduced, right? So, for example, here uh, the analyst decided that uh, support was. Um, grounded in goodwill of politicians and this attack was grounded in practical wisdom which is basically saying uh, this politician is not very smart so this is the uh, uh, again aristotelian, uh, aristotelian classification of uh, uh, he um, uh, he thought that um, uh, ethos uh, constitute of uh, three um, elements practical wisdom, you have practical wisdom if you possess practical knowledge or experience. Um, more, more, moral virtue, you have moral virtue if you possess good character traits, uh, tra traits. for example, you are sincere, sincere, so the attack could be, uh, attack grounded in moral virtue could be you are a liar. And goodwill, uh, you have goodwill if you share information at uh, if you know it, which means that basically you don't hide it yourself, but you share it with everyone. So you are in, in the context of politics. You are you care about uh, you, uh, um, about citizens, about everyone. Um, this is the results of the annotation, um, and if you look at that, uh, that there are some interesting conclusions that can be drawn. Um, so, if you look at, at supports, it seems that people, politicians tend to uh, tend to uh, support each other mostly uh, using virtue. So, you are sincere, you are uh, honest, you are loyal, and so on. Right? Uh, the second, uh, well, in terms of attacks, they equally use wisdom and virtue. So, uh, they will equally say you are a liar, but they might say you are not very smart. And also goodwill plays a, 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 a larger role in, in goodwill. But that's, that's on me, as I said, uh, that was very, um, uh, that was only a pilot, uh, you can say small, a small study. So these conclusions uh, are not, uh, <clears throat> uh, they would have to be um, farther uh, investigated, but you, but I, I'm just I just want to give you the idea how you can play them with more fine-grained uh, uh, um, 
categorization of what constitutes someone's ethos. We also implemented, uh, implemented technology that automatically recognizes ethos types. Uh, once you have, once you have uh, a system, whatever, if it's rule-based or uh, based on deep learning, which allows you to determine whether something is a, a support or attack on ethos, then you can uh, plug it in into the system that will allow you to classify ethos type. Uh, the results were uh, not very satisfactory, <laughs> but it's not surprising because uh, because uh, with three categories you move away from uh, binary classification task, and which is for autom for uh, for automatic systems uh, much more challenging. Uh, we you can also uh, try pairwise classification, which is kind of whether it is. Uh, which try to recognize whether uh, it is wisdom or virtue against goodwill or wisdom goodwill against virtue and so on. But uh, even though you, you achieve better results here, they are a, a little bit more difficult to interpret. As I say, it is very preliminary, this one. Okay, so uh, to summarize, uh, you can use ethos mining techniques to build a network of alliances and, and enmities in order to find out who is similar to whom. As a result, if you have a profile of uh, one user, you can approximate profiles, I guess, of others who are similar to, 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 to her. Uh, you can use ethos analytics to predict um, what will happen to an individual or uh, groups, which in the context of, uh, of um, user modeling uh, could allow you to predict how uh, the, profiles, the profile might change over time. Finally, you can use uh, ethos type mining to build more fine-grained models of characters and as a result more accurate, uh, accurate network and uh, predictions. Uh, ethos is an untapped source of information uh, about users. Their results suggest that um, it can provide profound insight uh, that can inform models of users and help tailor explanations to them. Thank you. It's one of the least satisfying things that we can't have, uh, I think, clapping. Uh, in the way that one would in, in a talk, but I'm sure I speak for all the attendees uh, that we, we really enjoyed the talk. A uh, little bit of housekeeping, the talk has been recorded, so this will be available afterwards if you want to see it. Uh, we also have a chat functionality here in Zoom, so I encourage all of you to type questions into this chat and I will read them to the speaker. Uh, I also, I hope we will manage to discuss everything we want here, but this is rarely the case for, for interesting topics. So we will also copy these questions into Slack later and Kasia can uh, continue the dialogue with you uh, maybe at a later time, maybe when you've rewatched re the video and had even more ideas. Um, let's see. And uh, I wonder if people are still trying to find the chat. So I will just write it's here and then maybe people can find it. Um, but I do have uh, a question uh, or two of my own. Let me see if I can find my notes here. Um, I was wondering if you thought about the application of uh, this, this kind of ethos mining for review extraction uh, in recommendations. So uh, in this case, it's not actually the character of a person, but the character of a product. So there is some humanizing of products, but uh, in, in fact, we do have sentiments here. We do have anaphora resolution. Um, do you think this could be in, in a sensible way? Uh, extracted to to see uh, how how people view products. So yeah, that's that's an interesting question. So I guess that uh, in some sense you could you could think about in, terms, in, in the context of reviews, you can think both uh, uh, about uh, ethos of reviews, <laughs> character of reviews, but also ethos of uh, 
of um, uh, reviewers. So we were uh, we were actually uh, thinking about it and uh, uh, I, uh, a little bit uh, previously. Uh, so, for example, if you have very short review, you can have uh, you, you you can hmm, I get I don't know uh, associate a lower trust and credibility of such a reviewer. So, because uh, you would expect the honest review to to give arguments to elaborate on something, if you if you have a very short review, it's a it tends to to be um, just maybe influence others by saying something negative or something positive without argumentative content, right? So, also we could detect. The, the, the uh, amount of sentiment in a review, right? So, or emotionality, maybe that would be the better, better way of phrasing it. Uh, if, if the review is very emotional and, and uh, less uh, argument, uh, I mean, you have less arguments as content, you also could associate lower, uh, lower trust uh, in, in um, or uh, less credibility to such reviewer. But of course, you can uh, you can um, use the uh, use the concept of ethos uh, extend the concept of ethos from speakers to other objects. Um, like in our latest review, we extended it to uh, any person. So that's the very very far away from what Aristotle originally were talking about because that. Aristotle even didn't allow that it is other speakers, right? So he was only referring ethos to, uh, I, I, he, he was talking about this, an ethos of the, all of the speaker that is actually performing the, the, the speech. <laughs> and so uh, we're talking, we were thinking about uh, even, um, uh, we're associating ethos with uh, people who are dead, with historical figure, figures in the context of cultural heritage. We're talking about, uh, you know, that actually uh, uh, a lot of debates whether or not to uh, demolish a statue, like for example, confederates in states at the moment, are about the ethos of these confederates. That that's that people are not talking about the stones, <laughs> a bunch of stones, but they are talking about the ethos of, of the person, whether it was a slave or a part of our history. So, of course, you can use this metaphor and extend it to, to other objects as well. Sorry, it took me a while to unmute. So we have some, some thank you for the nice answer, uh, very complete, and I think helps us think about maybe some, some of the work that we do. Uh, but some really nice questions here in the chat. So I'll start with a question from Cataldo. Uh, I know uh, that part of this answer is saying, uh, can this be used for social media and social networks? Uh, so in the work that you've done, where do you see this being feasible and where are there issues when the language is changing and evolving? Um, could you sorry can, can you read it again because yeah they... so 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 he's saying can your models be applied to social media and social networks do you think this would be feasible or does the language change okay so so uh, it's, uh, thank you uh, it's uh, yes definitely it is uh, uh, it is a challenge uh, but it's not a challenge of uh, ethos mining it's a challenge of NLP in general so general, generalize, uh, uh, being able to generalize one technology into other domains or uh, over time, it's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, that's why uh, uh, NLP uh, 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 techniques uh, are uh, very often are tailored to a specific application. But of course, uh, you, you can do it. So, um, for example, sentiment analysis, which is uh, one of the uh, most uh, successful, I guess, areas in natural language processing. Uh, um, be successful because it found, found, found uh, a lot of um, 
important applications in the in, in the in the industry, like for example, in stock market predictions. Um, so you can you basically the idea is that you are using uh, um, technologies to quickly see what are the tendencies and what are the atmosphere about the new product uh, in the uh, basically everywhere on social media and then a stock broker knows whether to buy a stock or sell it right so um, but it turned out, turns out that the sentiment analysis that were developed for one area had to be then uh, uh, this technique had, had to be adapted to another area so you couldn't kind of like just simply use something that you developed for I don't know uh, cars and then reuse it for polit I'm not politicians but uh, I don't know uh, uh, for shampoo <laughs> right? so it's 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 then it requires quite sometimes very boring uh, work of, of, of for example collecting data and annotate data um, so in terms of uh, in terms of ethos technologies uh, definitely even if you move from uh, British uh, uh, English into American English there will be some challenges but we, we we didn't explore how how difficult it is but we uh, we are um, quite hopeful <laughs> that it will, will not be that difficult uh, in terms of moving to social media that's again quite challenging presents uh, uh, even more challenges i guess because you could have users that are for example native speakers but uh, from the uk or states but also non-native speakers that speak english so the, the the way i mean the way they signal uh, ethotic uh, maneuvering uh, will be uh, also different in the, in the in each of these groups so you would have to adapt it definitely so but uh, I, I think that's that's very uh, interesting, fascinating area that I would uh, I'm looking forward into moving into. Look look forward to seeing where it goes and hopefully yeah, working together on it. Also, a very nice question from Jürgen Siegler. Um, I think this is the higher level idea is how do we deal with the fact that uh, the information that people present might not be truthful. So we're extracting signal from a non-truthful uh, basis. But he says, use the term ethos mining. It seems to me that your methods are more about attributing ethical properties to others, even though they may not, they may say completely fake things. So is it really ethos uh, that, that is extracted? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's very, that's very interesting. So uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> that will be the shortest answer. This is true. Um, so um, I, I guess that this is the the, the approach that has been uh, uh, taken in argumentation theory for some, some uh, uh, quite a while. Uh, that we are uh, are moving from uh, what is in people's head into what people publicly declare, uh, right? So, so in terms of argumentation, we don't talk about beliefs, but we talk about commitments, for example. So, I publicly committed myself by saying uh, that I don't know, um, I, I I will vote for tr Trump. I'm pu publicly committing myself to to to, to such an action. Um, so definitely we, we, we can't answer, uh, we can't, uh, when I was talking about the, the network of alliances and, uh, uh, and enmities, uh, it, th there will be something, some kind of connections can be fake. But I think that the, the advantage of uh, uh, this technique over the interviewing is that in, it, that People tend to be, you know, like they are in parliament. They they are they, they focus on facts. They focus on that they are emotionally engaged. They they maybe are uh, not thinking about how they refer to other politicians. So they are more honest because it's kind of like embedded, right? So you 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 say um, you say something about taxes and then refer to the other politician inside of this opinion about taxes that can reveal how how you think or how you feel about this politician so that that's the idea that, that you can 
move a little bit closer to, to the actual uh, actual uh, ethotic um, or uh, pull, uh, act, to what actually uh, people like or dislike, whom people like or dislike. So, um, the second uh, part of the of the question, could you repeat now? Sorry. Uh, so that was, I think that addressed it, but I think Jürgen had a follow-on question, which was oh. uh, relating to the blur between pathos and, and, and ethos. So uh, t a term such as admirable speech, is it is it really ethos or, or might it be actually a form of pathos? Oh yeah, this, this is, uh, 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 yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's uh, 100 million, million dollar question and, uh, and very spot on. So uh, yes, uh, it's. Uh, um, I mean, in rhetoric, for example, pe um, researchers are saying, okay, there, there is logos, ethos, pathos, and then when they are start to uh, elaborate on them, then they are saying, oh, in fact, you know, like uh, if you do ethos, then you do pathos, and if you do pathos, then you do logos, and it's kind of like then you have this kind of overlapping circles, and then. It's, 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 I mean, I think that basically there's no, as far as I'm aware, in the rhetoric, they didn't solve the problem of how, what is really the, the uh, relation between this, this, this two, two, three uh, um, uh, tools of persuasion. So even though it is, I mean, concept, conceptually interesting, kind of like think about this these uh, three categories, I think that in real life and not natural communication, natural language, people are mixing these things together. And the same is, in fact, with wisdom, virtue, and goodwill, and we found out that it's, it's not very, I mean, it's maybe theoretically it's interesting, but uh, then uh, practically, if you want to analyze some things, it's, it's really very difficult. So, uh, you, the answer to your question is that definitely there, there is a mix uh, of these things, but you can just uh, focus and, and think about whether or not it is ethos or not, uh, ethotic or not, right? And you, you ignore everything else. The question is whether it is uh, uh, ethotic through pathos, for example, like admirable speech, so you kind of like... Uh, try to evoke some emotions, but you just look whether it is trying to endorse another politician or not, or support another politician or not. So uh, this is the only question that we are as uh, asking, or were as uh, we were asking in this research, but right now, what we, uh, uh, one of the questions we want to um, uh, investigate is whether if you, uh, if you uh, include in our pipelines uh, it, uh, um, um, the recognition of emotions, whether it will improve the, 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 uh, the, the recognition of it. So the, the hypothesis would be that uh, people uh, typically uh, use emotion, emotional expressions if they want to uh, endorse or attack an, uh, other people. Why uh, the uh, factual statement or logotic statement will be less emotional, but we, we don't know this yet. What will be the answer to this question? But definitely, it's 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 uh, quite uh, difficult, and on the other hand, fascinating. So uh, we're kind of reaching the end of time, but we have one last question. So maybe we, if we can make a short answer. Uh, yeah. You mentioned an ethos lexicon. Um, could you give us some detail? Is this publicly available? Uh, can we learn more about it somewhere? Mm, well, I think it is not uh, pu uh, 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 publicly available, but you can you can uh, uh, email uh, my uh, well now ex PhD student. Uh, he just graduated, uh, uh, Rory Duffy, and uh, he can he can send it to you. But uh, this is one of the things that we want to do uh, right now. Uh, when I mentioned to you that we are upgrading our uh, presence uh, on online, and we want to make uh, those uh, technologies and um, uh, corpora uh, available, easy, accessible as well. 
Super. So thank you again for a really nice talk. Thank you for the participants for engaging questions. We will copy the questions, but not the answers uh, to Slack. So uh, I hope we can at some point continue also the conversation there. Uh, but yes, thank you again. Uh, and I believe we have uh, a short break. Uh, we, I suggest that we just keep this room uh, here if people just want to chat. Uh, and then we resume in 10 minutes uh, for the first workshop presentation. Thank you.